Hi, uh, my name's uh, Professor John Seymour. I'm the Director of the Department of Haematology at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in the Royal Melbourne Hospital here in Melbourne. In the disease of chronic lymphocytic leukaemia, or CLL, um, there's been a major trend over recent years with a number of targeted therapies uh, replacing or becoming a higher priority than traditional chemotherapy. Now, there are three classes of, of drugs there. BTK inhibitors, things like ibrutinib. PI3 kinase inhibitors, drugs like idelalacib. And um, the one I'll talk about, uh, drugs that interfere with what's called apoptosis. Uh, and venetoclax is the first drug in that class. And venetoclax um, began uh, in CLL being given on its own and given continuously. It's a tablet that you need to take every day. Um, we learnt in the laboratory that using it together with other treatments, and particularly an antibody treatment called rituximab that many patients will be familiar with because it's often combined with chemotherapy. It's the immuno part of chemoimmunotherapy. So if patients have chlorambucil and rituximab or fludarabine cyclophosphamide and rituximab. It's the antibody that uh, in the past was combined with chemotherapy. So more recently we've combined antibodies together with venetoclax. Why did we do that? Really uh, three reasons I think. The first is that it works better when you do it that way. The second is that we're able to achieve what look to be deeper remission, meaning that more of the leukemia is killed. And I think probably the most important reason and one that in the years to come we'll look back on uh, as a pivotal moment is that it allows treatment to be given for a, a specified limited time instead of needing to be continuous, that all of the other targeted agents um, uh, have associated with them. So, when venetoclax is used with an antibody, and at the moment that's rituximab, but other antibodies may emerge, the current um, approach is that patients begin the treatment with the venetoclax, and this is a tablet that's given each day. We need to be quite cautious starting venetoclax because it can be very potent very quickly and kill a lot of leukemia cells in a short period of time. And that can lead to imbalances in chemicals in the blood, what's called tumor lysis syndrome, or um, problems from breaking down a lot of tumor quickly. The way that that is um, handled and controlled is by a number of things. One is that there may need to be some medications that um, prevent damage to organs, such as the kidney, from some of these chemicals. A drug called allopurinol is routinely used. The second is that these chemicals are cleared from the body by the kidneys, and so taking plenty of fluids, usually that'll be drinking, but sometimes it might need to be supplemented with intravenous fluids through a drip as well. And the third way is by gradually increasing the dose in a stepwise fashion, um, with patients taking a small dose beginning for one week, and then gradually stepping up with careful monitoring uh, by your medical team uh, and nursing team uh, around each of those uh, dose steps to make sure that things are going safely. So the model is with care and attention and um, careful monitoring and support, the dose of the venetoclax is gradually increased up until 400 milligrams each day. So that'll be four tablets. Once people are stable on that, then uh, a week later the antibody begins and that's given in a drip. The first one takes about half a day um, and then the next ones are given over about an hour or two. And they're given once a month for six of those drips. And then the venetoclax continues. Um, at the moment it appears that two years is about the right duration of treatment where we're able to get deep and very good remissions in the majority of patients, more than 80% of patients where the drug works well, 
and in those where things haven't gone perfectly, even continuing beyond two years with our current understanding probably doesn't improve things further. So ongoing studies are looking at what the perfect duration of time is, and it's possible in the future it may vary patient to patient, but at the moment two years is pretty good for the vast majority of patients. And the drug would then stop at that point, and what we've seen so far is that in the large majority of patients there is very good, very durable ongoing control of their leukemia. Now, what about during the treatment? Things don't always go completely smoothly, and we talked about chemical imbalance from tumor lysis syndrome, but there are a few other things that uh, we need to be aware of to watch out for. Most of them very manageable, most of them uh, not serious. One is some degree of irritation to the stomach or the bowel, and some mild nausea or mild diarrhea um, is not uncommon with this treatment. It's far less common to need any medication to help it, so it's not like uh, intensive nausea or vomiting uh, that can be associated with chemotherapy. This is usually manageable by um, choosing uh, foods. Um, so venetoclax is taken of a morning after breakfast, so some people find different foods settle better with them. And occasionally, in my experience, maybe about uh, one person in 10, one person in 20 may need to take uh, an anti-nausea medicine just to calm things down. The diarrhea uh, is usually pretty minimal. And in fact, a number of patients have said um, they actually it keeps their bowels going a bit more consistently and regularly. Um, one, perhaps two, um, slightly loose motions a day would be um, the typical description of what patients tell me. It's pretty uncommon, but sometimes a medicine to um, slow things down a little can be used. So bowel things are typically well able to be managed. Um, one of the other um, factors that we see is some lowering of the normal blood counts. This occurs at some point in about 40% of patients and it's most common during the time when there's still a lot of CLL on board and in the bone marrow. And that typically is in the first couple of months. Most of the time this is just something that will be noticed on a blood test and can be monitored without needing any interruption to treatment. Occasionally what's called a growth factor injection, so GCSF um, for a day or two a week might be needed to just support the bone marrow until the CLL is cleared and the blood counts are stronger. And it's uncommon, so only in about 5% of, of patients um, is the low blood count associated by fevers or infection. So it is important to watch out for signs of infection, but on average that's a less prominent problem than we've typically seen in patients having chemotherapy. But it's still important to be aware of it because CLL itself and just patients uh, who are somewhat run down or not as robust um, because of the, um, the burdens of having their disease and their previous treatment also puts them at risk. Um, so there are far, um, there are uncommon side effects um, that can occur, I guess, uncommonly. Um, but those ones that I've talked about uh, are the things that can be seen with some regularity.